Alright, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be showing you how you can upgrade the Is It Phoenix Pioneer Challenger deck. On a budget, our goal is to get this as close as possible to the tier 1 deck without spending more than the deck's original retail price with our upgrades, which is about $40 to $50 USD. So let's take a look at this deck first. Right here is a top tier competitive deck in the meta right now, minus the lands, just the main board, and on the right is the deck that you get out of the box. So if we highlight the cards that are different, you can see that we actually have a significant portion of the deck. While there's a lot of red cards, especially in the spells, note that these are mostly just commons and uncommons, and we're talking about a couple of flame blessed bolts, expressive iteration, which has to be removed anyway. Is it charm? The tier one deck is playing stuff like spell peers and spike field hazard so it's not a huge deal the major problem with this deck is actually the creatures the deck should be playing a full playset of arc light phoenix and ledger shredder your deck only has two of the phoenixes and zero of the shredders and in order to fix this it would cost about 90 dollars primarily because ledger shredders are currently about 20 dollars each so that's way out of our budget, but the two Arclight Phoenixes are very attainable, very affordable, and also just absolutely necessary for this deck to work. Another notable thing is recently this deck has started playing an extra turns package. This was a lot of the red you saw in the meta deck. It's hard to say if this will last. It's a sort of a little wrinkle that's popped up recently. We'll see if it sticks, um, but temporal trespasses are currently $20 each. So while this is technically being played in the meta and you can definitely consider getting this extra turn package in the deck, I would say if you're going to spend $20 on a card, uh, make it Ledger Shredder first. That's more important than this little this little extra turn thing that it's doing right now. So first off, we're going to take out two expressive iterations for two Arclight Phoenix. This is absolutely 100% necessary for multiple reasons. First, we have to take out the expressive iterations because they are banned. You're allowed to play with these if you don't edit your deck, but as soon as you change it, you have to take these out anyway. And for Arc Life Phoenix, it's just absolutely necessary for the deck to work. I don't know why I shipped with only two, but we got to get two more. And fortunately, they've gone down in price because of this printing. So 10 bucks, 11 bucks, get your two Phoenixes. It's required it's necessary please do that next we can take out two crackling drake for two thing and the ice crackling drake isn't always played in this deck and when it is it's usually one or two copies remember that this deck is very good at filtering through its deck right so you really only need one or two of these to just come down win the game potentially four is excessive and no deck plays four uh, I, I couldn't find a single deck that played four crackling drake is it's like a 50 50 whether it's played at all and when it is, it's usually one or two. So take those out for Thing in the Ice. Thing in the Ice, I will say a lot of Thing in the Ices have been cut recently in favor of Ledger Shredder. So if you want to add Ledger Shredder, this is the spot. Instead of getting two Thing in the Ice, you can get two Ledger Shredders. That'd be 40 bucks. But those are expensive, $20 each, $40 for two, and you still need two more. So I think just getting two more Thing in the Ice, it's still played a little bit. A lot of decks will still play a couple copies. So I think having four of these, is fine on a budget they're like seven eight dollars each you might be going down even further so very cheap get a couple of those in makes the deck much better particularly against aggro decks very nice to have that zero four when your opponent has a bunch of two twos and two ones and stuff moving on to the spells as previously mentioned I don't think it's worth stretching for this extra turn package when it's so expensive. If you're going to buy these, get Ledger Shredders instead before going in this direction. But it is kind of weird that the stack has main board Flame Blessed Bolt. When these are played, they're usually played in the sideboard. And for Treasure Cruise, is also kind of weird. It's not guaranteed that you'll have enough cards in the graveyard to sustain that many Treasure Cruises. They're very awkward early. So most decks play two to three. So... Having main board Flame Blessed Bolt and a full four copies of Treasure Cruise is a little bit weird. So we can fix this. We can tune this a little bit. We can take out two Flame Blessed Bolt for two Fiery Impulse. Much more common. One mana usually deals three damage. Very nice. And... 
the Flame Bless Bolt, if you want them, can go on the sideboard. They are good against, like, opposing Phoenixes, right? The Exile Phoenixes. That's the thing that makes Flame Bless Bolt good, is the Exile effect. Being able to exile Tenacious Underdogs, Arclight Phoenixes, stuff like that. So, Flame Bless Bolt, good sideboard tech. Don't need a main board. Fire Impulse is more normal. And as for the fourth Treasure Cruise, I think this easily goes into the fourth pieces of the puzzle. Four pieces of the puzzle is, like, basically standard. Like, 99% of decks play four pieces. It can get multiple Phoenixes in the graveyard. It fills the graveyard for your Treasure Cruises. The pieces of the puzzle feed the treasure cruises so instead of having four cruises and three pieces of the puzzle four pieces of the puzzle and three treasure cruises is much more typical moving on to the mana base there are a ton of changes we can make if we want to spend money this deck should be playing pathways spire bluff canals shock lands unfortunately these are all incredibly expensive the best budget land is probably the pathways but they're still pretty expensive and the canals and shock lands are kind of crazy um th this is a lot of money if you want to fix this stuff but what we can do is we can take out two islands for two hall of storm giants this is just an extra win condition in the mana base that animates into a giant creature enters untapped early enters tapped late but when you have excess mana you know if the opponent's wiping the board having this be just a win condition in the mana base is super nice i will say that if we add these this deck does have four temples as well so having six lands total is a little bit awkward and because of that i did want to add spike field hazard i want to take out at least one mountain for one spike field hazard but that's seven lands total almost a third of the mana base entering tap so i'm just gonna stop at two islands two hall of the storm giants don't worry about spike field hazard it's not a huge deal but you can add spike field hazards in your deck if you can get the temples out like if you can take out say two temples for two pathways which isn't too expensive of, that sort of clears the way to maybe start adding spike field hazards in the places of mountains but for now on a budget let's just do two islands two hall of the storm giants and you know obviously we could dump hundreds of dollars into the mana base if we wanted but this is good for us and moving on to the sideboard i think we can take out one narset for one crackling drake which we took out of the main board so this is free many decks play narset in the sideboard but three copies is excessive it's not normal to have three full copies of narset and this deck is lacking win conditions in the sideboard normally you want good solid threats in the sideboard to bring in against like control decks and crackling drake is particularly good when people have graveyard hate if someone can wipe out your graveyard that makes it really difficult to win with arc life phoenix and when that happens you start bringing in extra crackling drakes because they don't care if your graveyard gets exiled they're still big regardless because they count cards in exile so crackling drake in the sideboard makes sense against those types of decks i also think it's okay to take out one or braid for one ether gust ether gust has become very relevant lately not only is mono green strong and has been strong right the mono green devotion nykthos ramp thing but gruel stompy and gruel mid-range decks are also on the rise so an Ether Gust or two in the sideboard has become very popular with this deck. And uh, yeah, that's all of our upgrades. There's plenty more room for improvement if you want to keep spending money. We've got Ledger Shredders. We've got that extra turn package. The mana base can be overhauled. Plenty of room for improvement. But this build should be much better than what you got out of the box because it actually works. We've got four Phoenixes now. We've got the Thing in the Ices good early against aggro decks that's the key that's what's gonna really just make this deck more consistent so hopefully that's useful check the description guys i have the complete deck list there a link to it anyway hopefully this video is helpful thanks for watching more to come we'll be upgrading all four decks so check those out when they are released and i will see you in the next one